Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk Bounty video and welcome to episode 181 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, leave that question in the comment section below and hopefully, as I said, I'll get round to answering your question. If you do happen to enjoy the video, hit the like button down below because that really does help the video and the channel in general and with all that being said let's just get straight on to the first question chris curran says great video as always and my only go-to channel for all things tvc thanks so much chris really appreciate that buddy he says now that we have the definitive imperial officer wouldn't it be incredible to get one of jeremy bullock from esb at cloud city that is an amazing idea and i'm sure everybody that's watching this video knows that jeremy bullock who played Boba Fett, also played an Imperial officer in Cloud City. I will put the image up of him now. I believe his name was Lieutenant Shekel. I think that's how you pronounce it. And 100% with you, Chris, that would be an awesome way to use the Imperial sculpt that we've already had for Piet and Jajerod. That would be a really, really good one to do. Maybe in like a pack of other officers or something. I think that's a, a sound idea, my friend. Martin Futter says, question for next week. With the recent theft at our beloved retailer, In Demand Toys, it got me thinking of some specialist insurance for my Star Wars and other collectibles. Do you have your collections insured or can you recommend any specialty companies out there? So I wouldn't really want to sort of recommend any companies or give you financial advice or anything like that, buddy. But what I would say is that, you know, make sure the company that you are currently with does in fact insure your collection. Because I know a couple of years ago when I rang mine up and I said, you know, I've got this collection, it's worth X amount of money. Is it insured, you know, if like there's a fire or if there's a theft? And they confirmed that it wasn't under the standard insurance that I had. So I had to change that up. And I think most companies might sort of give you some kind of bespoke insurance to cover things like that and i'm sure there are specialty companies out there but it's it's not something that i'd like you know sort of name a company and give you advice on joe 66 says hi bb joe here question for next week would you be interested if a future playset or vehicle included lights and sounds i feel many of the brand new vehicles play sets are moving away from lights and sounds not sure if it's a good thing or bad thing the new mattel jurassic park crowdfunded project has an automation lights and sounds I wonder if there's still space for that in the TVC line. I've got to say, I think when it comes down to big vehicles on HasLab projects and things like that, lights and sounds are kind of like at the lower priority for me. Um, you know, the first thing I want is it to be as screen accurate as possible. I want the paint deco to be good, all that kind of stuff. I think lights and sounds obviously can push the price up. I do believe that the Razor Crest was originally going to have lights. I think if you look at the prototype images, I will try and find an image. You can see little red LEDs underneath the wings. And I think they were originally going to be, you know, something so you could glow up the engines and things like that. You know, that sort of thing is going to obviously increase the cost. And maybe that's why they took those away to try and keep the cost down. I don't know. I know it sounds ridiculous because, you know, these things are really, really expensive anyway. But yeah, as I say, lights and sounds for me, you know, if I was a kid, I would absolutely love that. As an adult collector, not so much because I'm not really going to be sitting there playing around with the lights and sounds. Lights potentially on a shelf would look good if they're on all the time, what have you. But sounds and everything, as I say, low priority for me. Oinito Nakatomi35 says, hi BB, question for next week. Which mini rig could make an appearance in live action and then be made into a TVC vehicle? Keep up the great content. Well, I always go back to the one here. What's this? The MTV7, is it? I think it's called. I think that I've got that right anyway. Because this actually appeared in one of those cartoons on Star Wars Visions, the second series. In one of those, this appeared, which kind of made it canon, which I thought was awesome. So, you know, now it's been in that, maybe they could put it in live action and then it gets made into TVC. I think any of the sort of uh, mini rigs have potential because they're the right size i think they're shying away from the sort of larger vehicles unless they're the really big ones in haslab projects so you know some little vehicles like speeder bikes and, and things like that would be awesome and mini rigs really do fit into that sort of category at least from the size point of view anyway so that's the one i would like to see i think that'd be awesome obviously the cap 2 as well which is you know in kenner's terms bosk's ship he's on the box and everything that'd be a pretty awesome one to 
as well if that turned up in live action. I think that'd be that'd be cool. Shazoom says, hi Bosk, excited to watch this video. Question for next week. Do you think Hasbro will offer the updated 212th helmet through customer service? They did this before with the error on the Dino Thunder White Ranger helmet where people could send proof of purchase to receive the updated helmet. If they can do it for Power Rangers, then they have no excuse not to for Star Wars. I totally agree with your reasoning there. Um, whether they will do that, I really don't know because I think some people out there might be happy that they are based on the Clone Wars and then other people are not. I think a lot of people wanted it to be based on live action, which is perhaps why they've changed it, obviously. But at the same time, I have heard people that got the one with the black brow. Here's mine, by the way. Mine does not have the black brow. But I've heard people moaning, the ones that did get the black brow, that Waxer, obviously because he's based on the Clone Wars, shouldn't have the black brow, which... You know, the, you know, in that in that case, they can't win, basically, can they? So the problem that they've got is that they've included a named clone that's in the Clone Wars in a pack and therefore based it on the Clone Wars. And then the community are like, no, 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 no. We want 212th clone troopers based on Revenge of the Sith. So they've changed it. But of course, it doesn't match him. So, uh, you know, but in terms of uh, customer service, Give it a try, my friends. See what they say and let us know. And if you get a replacement, then I might have to do that myself. Starkiller says, another brilliant Q&A as always, BB. With the rumoured Haslab being the ghost, we will be wanting figures from the Rebel series. With so many cool characters on this show, I really hope Hasbro give us more than just the main crew with figures like Jedi Temple Knights, top of my list, and also the Forgotten Droid AP5 and the DT series Sentry droids that Admiral Thrawn uses to train with in his private quarters. To name a few I really want. I know this would be a crazy dream figure, but how would a 3.75 inch Bendu figure be? What are some figures you would want made and will Hasbro make them? Thanks, Tim. Well, I think it will probably all depend on the success or failure of that Haslab. If it goes well, then obviously I would imagine that we will get some of the Rebels or all of the Rebels crew with it as, as stretch goals, as it were. And we are getting Thrawn in the main line and he is definitely based on his Rebels appearance, which surprised me, I've got to admit. So there you go. We are getting them. Ones that I would probably want, you know, I always look to the main characters. So Agent Callas, I think, would be one that we would need. Uh, you've got the Seventh Sister and the other Inquisitors, things like that. But as always, you know, I would like them to be realistic interpretations of them so it is difficult when it comes to rebels because some of those characters are going to be in live action in the ahsoka show so it's a case of like the ones that aren't do they then release them on a rebels card but look realistic it's a bit of a conundrum that they're in really and you know what would agent Callas look like not as a cartoon you know as a realistic person it's it's a difficult one um i'm interested to see what they do as always, so we'll just have to wait and see. Mark M5561 says, Hey BB, question for next week. Do you think we'll ever see a retooling of the Millennium Falcon with a bigger cockpit, etc., to fit TVC figures like Chewie? Or do you think Hasbro is done redoing anything old school Star Wars and will concentrate on the new Star Wars, Mando, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, and the up and coming stuff instead? I don't necessarily think they're done with the old school stuff at all. You know, we will get that. As time goes on, of course, they will always give us the new media stuff as well. In terms of the Millennium Falcon, I really don't think they actually need to do anything with that. And I think it would be a bit of a waste of, of tooling dollars, if I'm honest. I think the one that we've got, that Falcon, is a pretty good Falcon, as Falcons go, right? I think there's plenty of other vehicles that we've never had before, or ones that desperately need an update much more than the Millennium Falcon does, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but in terms of, like, you know old school Star Wars, you know, I don't think they're done with that at all. You know, we've got plenty of stuff this year for the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary. And even when there isn't an anniversary, we are getting some figures, not as many as I'd like personally, but we are getting some. Alejandro Romanzo 6797 says, awesome video boss with the recent release of Waxer in the four pack. Do you think it's likely we'll see more random name clones from the Clone Wars show make it into the line? And if so, how would you imagine Hasbro would release them? Mainline waves, retail, fan exclusive, four packs. Thank you. I think we will see them and I think we'll probably see them in lots of different ways, to be honest. I think four packs is definitely a way to go with clones. But of course, we have had Browgate recently, which might have put them off putting sort of named clones in those four packs. But also we've had the Arc Troopers and Blitz and Colt and, 
characters like that on their own card back. So, you know, I don't think they're done with that. I think there's still plenty of characters that they can do from the Clone Wars. And yeah, I just don't think they're done with it. I'm sure we'll see them. My mate Stu, the Universal Toy Collector, says, congratulations on reaching 180 episodes. Question for next week. Do you feel that Disney Lucasfilm should slow down the amount of new Star Wars series being released so that they can get a decent amount of figures from each series made and released for us collectors? That would be the ideal thing, wouldn't it? But I don't think they will. I really don't think there's as much money in action figures as there used to be because obviously the target market these days is adult collectors and there's nowhere near as many adult collectors as there were kids back in the you know late 70s and 80s buying all this stuff. So I think you know the money makers for Lucasfilm Disney is the shows, Disney Plus subscriptions, that kind of thing. Um, not necessarily the, the actual sort of action figures. That's my opinion on it anyway. So as much as I'd like them maybe to slow down a little bit so they can catch up with some of the figures that I want from these various shows, I don't think they will. They're going to put all this stuff out and make as much of the franchise as they possibly can in terms of, you know, cartoon series and live action series, stuff for Disney Plus, films. Can't see it slowing down, my friend. Scolio Reset 6669 says, Greetings, Tim. Question for next week. As I observe, releases like Cad Bane, Ahsoka Corvus, bo and the two most recent Vader's Dark Times and Death Star 2, I'm glad I made the jump into TVC. What I see is a peak in quality for most figures and a price increase overall, which makes some releases for an occasional buyer like me not as interesting. Could the value proposition become a problem as price hikes up? Number of accessories, level of articulation, authenticity of scale, not considering deluxe releases, etc. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting topic, no doubt, the price of things and the quality of things and, and what have you. You being an occasional buyer, of course, you know, when you see maybe an R2-D2 that's using a sculpt from 10, 15 years ago is the same price as a Return of the Jedi Boba Fett that's brand new, all newly tooled with paint apps galore and ultimate detail. It can seem a bit strange, can't it? And obviously, that's obviously their business strategy, their pricing strategy. Um, I don't know how they do it in other lines. This is really the only sort of line I collect, so I can't really compare it to anything else. But, you know, I would suggest maybe they didn't make as much money on the Boba Fett figure as they did with the R2-D2 figure. So maybe they're sort of like offsetting something there. Do you know what I mean? And then when you are looking at the new figures, if you take Andor as an example... You know, this figure here on the right is 10 times better than this figure here. And there's what, maybe seven years between the two, I would suggest. I think this one came out in 2016 in the 3.75 inch black series. And this one was like a couple of months ago. So the difference is stark. At the end of the day, that the sculpt, the articulation, the, the paint apps is far, far superior on this one than it is that one. So I'd imagine that this one costs them a lot more to produce than that one and that's only in the space of maybe you know six years they're still using sculpts from like 15 years ago as, as we know difficult topic to talk about you know the value proposition and what have you um i think you just basically have to do it on a case by case basis if you're only buying a few things and you're picking and choosing you know whether you think something's value for money or not i do wish with the smaller figures that they would include extra stuff maybe to make it more sort of viable but you know, that's the world we're living in. A Kirby Mock says, great episode. Always genuine, honest answers. Thanks, Tim. Question for next week. With the Black Series figures returning with Windows, plastic packaging, no-brainer Hasbro, do you see the deluxe versions of TVC figures following suit by dropping the large box art on the front, similar to the standard TVC figures? I've not purchased any, as I'm not a fan of the large windowless box. Yeah, I think some people thought that maybe those style boxes, those deluxe style boxes were like a prelude to for when they went plastic free. But I'm not 100% sure on that. I think they did try various other ways for, you know, deluxe figures or figures that had extra accessories like the Sith Trooper here. We got another one of those, didn't we, with lots of other weapons in there. Even the Mandalorian with Grogu and the removable head, like the battle damaged one of the Mandalorian. That was almost like a kind of deluxe. And then, of course, we got the Mandalorian with the spiders, which I've definitely heard Hasbro employees at various conventions and on live streams and stuff say that they didn't like that packaging. And because obviously the card was too big for people's star cases and they didn't match the other ones on the walls. So then they went with something similar to similar to this, basically. And I've got this here because 
you know, it's not a new thing. These boxes are not a new thing. They did them in TVC 1.0. We obviously had the Ewok Scouts, we had the um, two ATST drivers, and then I think we had some scanning crews and stuff like that. I think it's a way of really of them getting like two pack figures out. So they're kind of using this sort of box as, as a way of getting their deluxe figures out because they didn't like the ones, you know, with the bigger bubble, the, the spider ones basically. Um, so it's not a new thing really. So, you know, this just proves that this sort of thing was out ages ago basically and I've got this one here actually because in a future video I'm going to be opening this one and reviewing it it's mint but I need those Ewoks in my tribe so I need them loose so I'm going to be opening that in a future video. Riley Bob says do you or little Bosk ever take background secondary characters and swap parts heads around to make better characters to fill out your display I've taken the Shea Vizsla head and Reaver body and made a new Inquisitor which pops with the red hair on the Sith body. As always, cheers, Tim. That's a pretty good idea, actually. I can imagine Inquisitor having the red hair. That sounds good. Me, personally, I don't really do that. I'm quite a purist in terms of I like to keep things how they are released. I don't really have too many customs. I have done a few little bits here with, like, capes and soft goods and, and what have you, but I've never really sort of, like, made my own characters out of other characters. Little Bosk, on the other hand, he loves doing that. He takes all his figures apart, swaps hands, swaps heads. <laughs> he does that all the time. Um, but I guess that's more of like a way of him playing. Darth Cerebrus 5074 says, Do you think Hasbro will ever do retro vehicles or playsets like they have been doing with the figures? It would be great to get the Cantina or Hoth playset or maybe some of the harder to get mini rigs. Yeah, the... the the play sets I could maybe see them doing as maybe like a, I don't know, maybe a, a convention exclusive or something. In terms of the vehicles, I've always thought that, you know, I don't think they're going to want to get into that game because at the end of the day, it's going to cost them a lot of money um, to tool up those, you know, they haven't got the tooling still from 1980 or whatever for a lot of those vehicles. So to do them, it's, it's going to cost them money. And I think, you know, Someone like myself would sooner go out and spend, you know, I could pick one of those up for like five pounds. If Hasbro was selling that, how much would that be? 20, 25 pound, maybe more. So I don't think it's a viable thing personally, but you know, that's just my opinion. Nino Brown says, great show as always. Question for next week. If the HasLab ghost is successful and the assumed success of the N1, do you believe Hasbro will release more vehicles? Love the M1 display idea. Any thoughts on why Hasbro doesn't do accessory packs? Something similar to the Endor pack. It's a good way to world build and entice collectors to purchase scene specific characters. First of all, yes, if the Ghost is successful and the M1 is successful, that will only encourage them to, to do more. They're always going to do things that make them money. So at the end of the day, if, if the N1 makes them money, then they will do more vehicles. I'm, I, I'm sure of it. In terms of accessory packs, I think that comes back to what I was talking about the Sith Trooper with those accessories. I know what you're talking about, that Endor one that came with loads of different accessories. I don't think that we're really going to be getting things like that anymore. I think the most we'll get is those deluxe boxes. I think there's two different types of deluxe box, isn't there? There's the figure like your Paz Vizsla and your Dark Trooper. And then there's the figures that we've already got with loads of accessories. So like your Stormtrooper with the tripod cannon and... A soaker with soft goods and and some other bits and bobs. <laughs> I can't remember what she came with now. You had the incinerator trooper with Grogu and lots of fire effects. I think that's probably what we can expect in terms of um, accessory packs. But you never know, man. You never know. But I can't see it happening, I've got to say. All right, then, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Don't forget to drop a like down below and ask a question in the comment section below for next week's episode. And also, don't forget to check out my new series where I am documenting my new collection room build. So I'm having a loft conversion. Um, don't worry, I'm not paying for a loft conversion just to have a collection room. It, we were going to get it done anyway. We're having a bedroom built upstairs as well. And then luckily for me, I'm getting the other spare room up there for my collection room, which is going to be awesome. So I'm going to be doing a whole series on that of the progress each, maybe every couple of weeks when there's something decent that's happened and changed with it and what have you. And we'll be able to see that collection room take shape. But I want to thank you all for watching this video and I want to thank my Patreon supporters and channel members, as I always do, for the extra support. It means a great deal. Thanks, everybody, and we shall see you on the next one.